giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello everyone, I'm Ben here with First Capital Robot in Three Days. Uh, we got some really exciting stuff to show you here today. We've got a finished robot. We are now at hour number 72. Uh, so it is time for us to show, uh, showcase our robot, some of the cool stuff it can do, and it's going to be really awesome. So before we begin, I'd like to thank our very generous sponsors. Uh, obviously, we have Techfire 225 and Nemesis 2590 that have really uh, championed this build. Uh, we also have Andy Mark, Vex Pro. Rev Robotics. Um, first updates now, who has been very generous in providing their stream to us and let us stream all the way to 3.30 a.m. this morning. <laughs> um, and also Penn Air and Hydraulics, Coupling Corporation of America, the uh, York County uh, Bureau of Tourism as well for their support in making this possible. I uh, want to note that they're also sponsoring our FTC State Championship here in York this coming March. So uh, I want to thank them for all their support through that. We also want to thank the generous parents who've provided food for us throughout this build. We want to thank the super awesome parents who've also helped build these field elements that you see here so that we can show you these uh, the things that our robot can do. So it's been a really great experience. I think I speak for all of us that we've had a tremendous time. And hopefully we could show you some stuff that's, that's pretty cool. We'll be releasing a lot of content as we go. The reveal video will come out at some point. But, uh, but right now, you know, let's, uh, let's see what it can do. So I, before I do that, i got to hand it over back to Tyler. He's going to talk a little bit about what giveaways we have for today. Yeah, we do have a couple of giveaways if you're watching live. Uh, starting off, first off, from our friends at Redfish Robotics. They're giving away another First Update Snell mug that you can see there on screen. Yeah. And if you're interested in getting one of these, all you have to do is uh, head on over uh, to tinyurl.com forward slash Redfish Robotics, and you can check out their Amazon page that is on screen right now and all the cool mugs that they have to offer for you. So once again, tinyurl.com forward slash Redfish Robotics. We also do have a uh, one more T-shirt uh, to give away. You can see uh, that our Ben is uh, modeling it here for us, along with yeah. Griffin in the background. Uh, however, it's not going to be uh, my size or Ben's size. we got a small leftover. So that's uh, if you win, it's going to be a small. So either you can look like the Incredible Hulk or you can, uh, you know, be small like you know i'm not in enjoy that t-shirt that way so uh we're gonna have a keyword to give away uh near the end of the show and we'll draw twice uh we are gonna draw for the shirt first because if you don't want the shirt because it's not the right size for you then you can get the mug and you'll have that choice for that uh so once again if you're interested in winning all you have to do is click that little follow button on top of the channel there if you're interested in getting five times luck subscribe to first updates now help support uh content that's independent uh, from everybody else, and we'd love to have your support for that. You can do so for free through Twitch Prime or for just a few bucks a month. So with that said, enjoy the robot reveal. Giveaway's coming near the end of the show. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tyler. So I'm going to kick it off. I'm going to hand it to Michaela. She's going to show some of the human loading features that we have with our robot and a little bit of scoring with that as well. Hi, uh, I'm Michaela from TechFire225, and um, I'm going to show some of the human scoring. So, uh, first of all, the hatch panel, when it is in the human player station, is very easily removed with the Velcro on our intake. So, it just drives in and pulls it right off, and then it'll go and place it on the rocket. <laughs> and then the robot can come back, and also intake the balls from the human player station. So the balls just roll down and into the intake mechanism. Um, our human player station is, is not to spec yet. Um, there probably will be some bouncing and we haven't been able to test that yet because we don't have the uh, perfect game elements yet.
cool. Thanks, Michaela. Now I'm going to hand it over to Griffin next, and he's going to talk a little bit about our floor lording capabilities with this robot. Sure. Thanks, Ben. Uh, another one of the capabilities we built into this kind of combined game mechanism here is the ability to pick off uh, pancakes off the floor. Yep, attached to the Velcro like that. Let me move the ball out of the way. Oh, are we out of air? Yeah, yeah, yeah recharge. Just, um, just as a public service announcement for everyone, um, if you have questions about the robot, feel free to tag at first updates now, and we'll answer your questions after we finish our demo here. Um, you see that we're plugging into the air hose here in the shop. We have the compressor turned off so we can run this robot longer, so we can demo more things for you. Uh, so just, um, just so you know, we're using uh, the shop air here, so that's what Michaela's doing right now, is re-airing the robot. We've got a slight leak that we're working on. Anyway, I'm going to hand it back to Griffin here. Thanks, Ben. Let's go for that pickup once more. Uh, we have the compressor turned off on the robot, uh, just because it's loud. And we'll go back up to the third level. And we can demo the floor pickup as well. Oh, it works most of the time. Uh, yeah, Michaela, can you leave the ball on the ground? Uh, roll it over to me. I just want to show pickup without a backstop of any sort. Oh, is it stuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're having this one issue um, with some interference on the arm. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. There we go. So uh, we, we did a uh, pancake pickup from the human player station with uh, cargo intake. Uh, and then we also did pickup off the floor for both uh, pancake and cargo. Great. Back to Ben. All right. So the next thing we're, that we're going to demo is we're going to demo our access to level two over here. So um, we're going to reconnect the air real quick uh, to the robot. We'll probably just leave the air connected for the course of this one because of our slight leak in the robot. And I'm going to turn it over to Aiden, and he's going to talk a bit about the, um, about the climb to level two here. So Aiden, could you, do you mind coming over here real quick so the robot can pass through? Thanks. Hey, guys. It's Aiden here from Sharp 3260. So the level two climber mechanism, um, we wanted to do something simple, uh, quick and dirty that uh, got us to level two. We uh, tossed around the idea of, oh, can we just pop a wheelie? And we're pretty sure that would be difficult. Um, but if you have really good drivers, who knows, maybe. Um, but we wanted to have an actual mechanism to do so. So we have one uh, pneumatic cylinder on the front and two in the rear. They are all uh, one and a quarter inch bore, which if you do the uh, force over area of 60 PSI, gives you about 100 pounds per piston. And so lifting the front up, we're, we're not lifting the whole robot weight, so we were fine with just one off-center piston. And then the two in the rear jack up the rear of the robot, which has most of the weight, um, to bring the robot level once the front of the drivetrain has uh, traveled onto the second layer of the hab. So the first step of the mechanism is to jack up the front of the robot with that front cylinder. And it has a uh, HDPE uh, puck on the bottom that allows very low friction 
with the HDP surface of the HAB. And the drivetrain is still in contact at the rear here. Um, we don't have a ton of driver practice, but we're doing the best we can. And and a lot of the a lot of the functions of this robot could get a lot smoother with with more driver practice, with more uh, sensors. Might be might be the first go with bumpers. It's it's not on the bumpers. It's just the left left side of the drivetrain needs to have a lot more power. So because we have one off center piston, which is one aspect of our design. No, we're not on on this side. And and. This specific design, we, we started on yesterday morning, um, and it was a final tack on. And so now the front wheels were on the, the HAB level two, and then the final, the final step is to deploy the two rear cylinders, jack up the rear, and now the robot is uh, parallel, and we can slide on the rear piston uh, pucks using the drivetrain, which is uh, on the level two of the HAB. Um, pretty simple mechanism, and it can be done a lot better, but we, we thought it could uh, be a pretty simple way to get on to level two. And I'll uh, pass it back to Ben to keep on with the demo. All right, so we made a couple adjustments there, and I uh, hadn't tested it yet. So it looks like we're, um, you know, it, it's pretty close. We've got uh, some good video from it from last night, too, working pretty smooth. So every, as always, everything is a constant process, constant iteration, and we always work to improve the robots over and over again until, uh, until basically it's world championships in most cases. Um, you, you have something to add, Andrew? Yeah, the sprocket was off on the back left wheel. That's why we couldn't turn. Interesting. All right. So they're going to work quickly to, uh, to repair that right now uh, as, uh, as we get the robot back together. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank some of our fantastic sponsors that have helped us so much with um, the, different, uh, the different components on the robot. Tyler, do you mind spinning around and I can you know, point to some stuff as, as we go? Have to start with our uh, rock solid six mini SIM drive, courtesy of Vex Pro. It's got uh, th three SIM ball shifters and the uh, Vex traction wheels with traction tires. It's working great for, uh, for our drivetrain performance needs for this game. Uh, also from Vex Pro, we have the flex wheels on our intake right here. So these, um, you know, are great for gripping the balls. Um, just uh, do a fantastic job with that. On the Andy Mark side, we have these Omni wheels from Andy Mark. They also do a fantastic job gripping the balls. All the green 30A stuff from Andy Mark does a great job. Um, I've got them there. Um, we have the lift kits from Andy Mark. We've got a two-stage lift. This is uh, this allows us to reach all the different heights that we need to reach, including the third level. So the lift kick from Andy Mark does a fantastic job with that. We have also from Andy Mark, we got some peanut extrusion that. Um, is a, a awesome lightweight standoff option for teams that they can tap into either side and it basically allows a standoff. So you see, we, we, uh, we on TechFire and um, you know Nemesis and everything, we like to make sure that we have nice firm attachments and the peanut extrusion does a great job with that while maintaining its lightness. Uh, also from Andy Mark, we have some spacer material that they provided, the new aluminum hex spacer. We cut a piece of that to go inside our gearbox transmission for our arm. It's hard to see in here, but um, it was something that we, we couldn't do with a standard plastic spacer from any vendor or anything like that. We really needed an aluminum one. So, um, you know, thanks so much to them for providing that. Um, for, let me, let me think here real quick. Oh yeah, I, we have to say thank you also to Andy Mark for providing a game piece to us. That was uh, extremely helpful. 
on the rev side, we've got in our lift here, we have two rev brushless motors that are used to uh, lift our, move our lift up and down. Um, we think it's great that Rev is providing these to teams and we we're excited to try and test them on our lift to, uh, you know, show teams how they work in their performance. So, um, you know, look for lots of more information coming up on those, especially when like the Java documentation uh, and uh, libraries are released and everything for teams, because I think a lot of teams use Java, it'll be, uh, it'll be great there that uh, we can have integrated encoders in our motors and, uh, and things of that nature. So that will be fantastic. Um, so with, uh, with that, I think we're ready to go to questions. We, we, got, the, we got the sprocket in? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about what happened. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, uh, the rear drive shaft on the left wheel, the sprocket completely came off. Oh. Um, so that's back on now. Should be good. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna try the lift up one more time. I'm gonna give it back to Aiden so he can commentate. Yeah. So because the front of the drivetrain is jacked up, the back, rear two wheels are the only points of contact. So it was definitely very difficult to drive straight when only the right side of the drivetrain was able to power the robot. And our, the CG of the robot is somewhere between the two middle wheels. Um, and that, that means that once we have the front three wheels onto level two, uh, we can retract the rear cylinders. Anytime between that third wheel and actually contacting the cylinders. One of the big uh, questions we have ourselves is the durability of this system. Uh, these cylinders are rigidly mounted to the frame um, well, with some aluminum plates so they can flex a little bit. but contacting uh, exactly perpendicular to the uh, length of the cylinder uh, definitely has a significant risk of just bending those cylinders. Um, we haven't noticed anything uh, alarming yet. Um, we haven't been running it for that long, but that's one of the, one of our questions and a system like this would, that would have to stand up to a ton of matches would definitely need to be uh, more thought out. Yeah, pass it back to Ben. All right, thanks so much, Aiden. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick it over to, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, oh, I'm pulling on the cord, oops. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Um, do you guys wanna go ahead and bring it down, pull it over here, and we'll, uh, you know, and we'll go ahead and kick it to questions while we do that here. Keep it on the platform? Okay. All right, so we're putting it on the platform. Um, and uh, if anyone in the chat wants to see something demoed, we can do our best to do it. Uh, we'll let you know if we can't. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Heather, and she's going to start the questions. Bryce Croucher asks, how tall is the robot in starting configuration? In starting configuration, the robot is just under the 48-inch mark. It's about a quarter inch shy. Bowhunter3 asks, did you modify the hubs for the green Omnis? They seem loose on a half hex on ours, is, or is it three hex yeah. shaft? Yeah, I'll turn it over to Michaela for that one. Um, so when we were putting the Omnis on, um, we were actually, the, the Omnis were um, sponsored to us, and they actually came with an insert for the half inch um, hex. So I'm not, I, it would be bought then um, on their website. Nazgahol asked, are they concerned that they'll accidentally pick up a disc at the human player station when they're going for a ball because of the dual intake geometry? Uh, I would say that our plan is to, uh, worst case scenario there, we can come up with another arm preset that does not have the, um, that, the, that does not have that, uh, the Velcro in the same orientation. We can tilt it up a little bit more. So that shouldn't be a problem for the robot. We don't have that programmed in right now, but that is something that's very easy to do. Boz Kingoff asked, what did the weight end up being? Yeah, uh, the weight with everything on there right now is probably in the 130 to 135 range. It is a little bit overbuilt, but there are clear wins that teams could do to lighten it up. We've got um, lots of uh, 0.1 thick versa frame here. A lot of this could be switched to 16th on the elevator. Um, we have two runs of chain on either side. We really don't need to have 
both uh, necessarily in order to come up for this one because this elevator is a lot more, it, it's, it, we, we overbuilt it basically. Uh, you could make it a lot lighter duty. So the weight savings are totally possible with this game. Also, the elevator goes a little higher than we actually need it to for the game. We overestimated just in case, so there's some weight savings opportunities there. Stinky Hedgehog asked why six mini sims over four sim drive. So we went with six mini sims because it's a tried and true drive that where the mini sim is really a motor that's optimized for FRC. It does a great job with when you have six of them pulling the current out of the battery and optimizing the total amount of power that you have. There's a bunch of threads on Chief Delphi about this. Um, we on TechFire used it last year. A bunch of top teams used it. Um, have used it. it, it it's over. Uh, it, it's a great drivetrain for many teams to use. That's why we chose to use it. Randomizer seventy seven said that platform looks less than six inches. Are you able to confirm if that's a six inch difference between level one and level two? All right, they're going to go grab a tape measure right now. It it is actually five and a half inches. Yeah, with that, yeah. A little bit. Yeah, a little bit over five and a half inches. So it is a little low. Uh, Randomizer77 also asked, how far can the roller intake shoot the ball out? Yeah, um, one of, uh, someone from the gallery want to take that? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Because the wheels don't really get time to spin up, it doesn't actually launch it very far. We can show that real quick. You just need to lift the elevator. See, it doesn't. It doesn't really have much range to it, so you'd have to be against the rocket or the cargo ship to score. All right. Mick last asked, what type of teams do you expect to build this? It looks a little advanced for what they'd consider a low-resource team. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it, it really depends. It, if I, I believe that there's a number of opportunities in this. Obviously, we built this in three days. You could look at this and say, hey, I want to make this better or this other thing lower cost or that sort of thing. It it, it really depends. Really, there there's three degrees of freedom in the arm alone with a wrist, a four bar, and an elevator. That probably is a little bit on the complex side. Um, we, we really wanted, with our team, we really wanted to do go it all out and do the best possible robot that we could in three days, re re like regardless of, you know, the resources, here with the resources that we had on the team. So um, there wasn't really a whole lot of thought about necessarily what level it was. It's just if you think that your team has the level and ability to do something of this, you really probably should go all out. I think that there's a lot of, sometimes there's a lot of negativity in FRC where people say like, oh, you, you know, you should not reach for the moon, but you can, you can always reach for the moon. It's good to reach for the moon in a little bit of something, you know. You don't want to reach for the moon in everything, but you just, if you make sure you stay informed and reach for the moon in, you know, at, at least one little part of the design, you know, sometimes you can catch it. So um, we, we did that here, and for the most part, I think we were very successful. Obviously, we have a bunch of tuning to do, but, again, it's only been 72 hours. Here. Here, yeah. Yeah, you can talk both. Um, I also wanted to say that RA3D is not necessarily for you to build the exact robot that we built, but it's to give you ideas on different mechanisms that could be used in the game. So you don't have to use every single mechanism that was used uh, on our robot, and don't use RA3D um, to get design fixation, because that is definitely not what this is for. It's to give ideas and to inspire. So you don't have to build this exact robot, or no team sh should probably build this exact robot. It's just to give you ideas of ways that things can be done. Yeah, um, definitely agree with all that stuff. Um, 
I just wanted to bring up, there is some confusion kind of out in the RI3D space. Um, some people are doing like the original RI3D and then there's other groups that are doing what we call MCC or minimum competitive concept. Um, our goal with this was to do the best that we absolutely could. We weren't really considering um, what kind of resource level team would be able to accomplish it. We don't intend for anyone to build this exact same robot. Um, it was just to inspire everyone out there. Um, hopefully you can take some ideas from this, try them out, see if you like them. Um, if you don't like them, please build something else. Um, yeah, we've had a fun time doing it. And I hope it helps everyone out there. Thanks. All right, so before we get to our next question, we're going to start our giveaways uh, for today as we start to wrap up our stream for today. Thank you, everybody, who's taking the time uh, to help support First Updates now. We definitely appreciate it. So if you're interested in winning uh, either the shirt that you see Ben wearing right now um, in a small um, or <laughs> a uh, First Updates Now mug from our friends at Redfish Robotics, you need to type in first capital, one word, F-I-R-S-T-C-A-P-I-T-A-L, in the chat, and that will get you entered to win. We're going to draw for the T-shirt first and pause for a little bit because we have to make sure the winner wants the T-shirt. So if you win, you got about 60 seconds to let me know if you want the T-shirt because it's only available in small sizes. Uh, just a heads up, by the way, for this, we can only ship to the U.S. or Canada. Uh, so do apologize to any of our international friends that might be watching just due to shipping costs. So First Capital, once again, and we'll wrap up our Q&A. All right, thank you, Tyler. Actually, before we get to the next question, I think it'd be good for me to go through all the bad stuff on this robot. And if someone, if anyone else wants to chime in, you know, feel free to throw in other things you think are bad. Um, to start with, I would say it's too heavy. Um, yeah, too too much. Uh, th there's too uh, the, the elevator's too heavy. It's overbuilt. It goes too high relative to with the four bar. Um, there's probably elements that we could do with this with a stick as opposed to a four bar to, uh, to make it simpler. Um, what, what else? The, there's no electrical panel on the back, so a bunch of stuff's exposed. These tanks are exposed. Um, uh, oh, what else? We've, uh, the shot is probably a little shallow. It would be good if we could have that a little more powerful uh, on the front. And obviously, we need some alignment tuning with our, our Velcro mechanism. So those are those are a couple to start out. Does anyone else have uh, any that they want to? You got some, Christian? Potentially one of the ways to increase the power of the shot is um, changing the reduction on this first planetary, um, reducing the reduction um, just so the motor spins a little faster. Um, that would be an easy way to shoot the ball a little further. Oh, yeah. I, I have from the outside. We don't really have a way to... Uh, do line following or position tracking right now. So doing some sort of you know code stuff in that vein to either have line following, or uh, vision tracking, or some sort of uh, or mechanical alignment devices for scoring and collecting would really help it a lot. Yeah. Um, any others from anybody? Yeah. yeah. Um, the second level uh, climb system we've come up with here. Uh, would certainly need a lot of improvement before I'd feel comfortable putting it on a competition field. Um, right now, there's really no way to ensure that when you attempt to drive onto the second level, you aren't going to completely bend the pistons that have extended out from the bottom of the robot. Uh, maybe there's some way in software you could help with that. Um, and I can imagine a couple other uh, mechanical ways you could solve that um, to make the possibility of damage a lot lower. Um, but while some of the things on here, you could say, oh yeah, I could try to run that in a match, like. The, the second level climb definitely would make me uneasy. Also, there is a persistent air leak, and you've seen on stream this thing tends to jam down into the frame, so we need a little bit of protection there. Um, let's go ahead and uh, head on to the next question. Savannah1720 so asked, did you consider trying the third step? Yeah, um, does someone want to answer that here for me? Uh, yeah, we we definitely considered uh, attempting to go for that. Um, we tossed around a couple of ideas, um, but because the major constraint that we were working with here with a robot in three days is time, uh, we saw the third level climb as a time sink for a lot of members on our team. Uh, and we thought that would take away from interacting with the primary game elements uh, with uh, the pancake and the cargo. Um, and we really wanted to build a robot that would be able to um, kind of do all the main teleop tasks. Um, and, you know, we always wanted to say, oh, it would be great if we were on the third level. Um, 
but that was just lower. We, we ranked that lower priority than the other things. So we're actually going to start our first giveaway here. So uh, with that said, you had the option to put in first capital. We're going to draw for the T-shirt first, and if you win, you have about 60 seconds to let me know if you want the T-shirt or not because it is only in a small uh, so uh, for the second drawing, you can still use the same keyword. You don't need to re-enter it in or anything like that. Uh, and the first winner is going to be Zab Bravo 18 So Zab Bravo 18 please send first updates now a private message or tag me in chat to let me know if you want the T-shirt or not. Otherwise, we'll give you the mug. So please let me know as soon as possible. And uh, whatever one that person picks, we'll do the other drawing once we're done with Q&A. Bakavana asks, can you show the arm reaching various heights for the rocket ship? All right, um, okay, I'm going to turn that over to you guys here, and we're, we're going to start using the, the robot to show. Okay, so this is level one scoring. Um, let me back up. Um, you go to level two. Uh, not all the presets are, are quite there yet, so you can actually reach um, level one and level two without moving the elevator um, at all. And then, actually, I think that it, the elevator does move a, a hair on, on level two, but it's not that much. And then we can uh, go up here. Um, so arm is staying in the same position, and the elevator to level three. All right, um, let's go ahead and head on to the next question. Bryce Croucher asks, how far does the hatch cover get launched without a backstop? All right, let's go ahead and pick up a hatch cover. And, yeah, we're, we're going to have a, a quick, um, we're doing some code deployment really quick. So let's go ahead and have the next question, and then we'll get ready to demo this. Mick Last asks, can you show it dropping down from level two, and what are your thoughts on dropping in relation to auto routines? All right, before we do that, we're going to do a, do a quick test, just doing a little bit of tuning. All right, could you repeat that last question, please? Uh, they ask, can you show it going down from level two and your thoughts on dropping in relation to auto routines? Okay, uh, so with relation to auto routines, we didn't do a whole lot of work in that area. And, uh, the main thing that you have to think about there is the drop is probably going to change your encoder values so uh, just be conscious of that as you make your auto routines um, it may it may create some uh, some issues with if you just use dead reckoning for that that's just the encoders in gyro yeah uh, yeah let's go ahead and are you ready to show just an interesting thing um, so we were slamming the uh, elevator down so hard that sometimes the arm uh, was getting wedged but one of the nice things since um, everything is motion profiled we can actually just turn down the uh, acceleration mm -hmm. on lift without limiting its max speed. Um, so I just did that, uh, and hopefully we won't be slamming the arm anymore. All right, so um, they would like to see, I believe it was uh, the uh, how far the hatch cover will shoot, or how far it will launch. So if we could just move it to, um, you know, like level two, say, uh, something like that. Yeah, there. Yeah, can we do a side profile? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so that's how far it launches right now. So if that does not pass inspection, we can actually turn it down by, um, you know, putting a secondary regulator on the robot to reduce how far it pushes. So um, we are, uh, you know, very conscious of that. You always want to make sure you pass inspection and have a way to get through. Um, they would all, yeah. The other, the, uh, other option, instead of putting a secondary regulator, would probably be just the flow restrictors uh, oh, yeah. the, uh, with yeah. the screws on the uh, valve. Yeah. All right. So the uh, another thing that they wanted to show, what, what I believe it was the arm drop from level two. Was that what it was? Okay. So they, they want to, yeah, can we just bring it, do something at level two, and then, um, yeah. Uh, what, is it the ball at level two, Heather? Or is it the? They just want to see the elevator at level two, which. Uh, I think the, uh, the piece that came off the right. 
Yeah. Yeah, so that's level two. Right that right there. Oh, they asked uh, for the starting configuration. You start from level two on the hab. Oh, uh, oh, there. Oh, yes, of course we can. Oh, yeah. 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 They mean driving off of yeah, level two. Driving gotcha. off. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, the robot can start on level two. Yeah. This this one's pretty quick. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and go on to the next question. Uh, Dr. Vaughn asked. Uh, for the arm and elevator, are they motorized or air-driven? The arm and elevator are both motorized. Is Hanno 45 asked, can you foresee people making depositing balls and panels automated during driver controlled using the lines or vision targets? Uh, yes, we do. Um, however, we need to do further testing to see if it's any faster than just having a driver practice a ton and getting good at it. Um, could we drive it off level two? Uh, if I can call over and start to okay, well, we'll give it a shot. All right, we're getting ready to drive it on to level two here. Now we're we're uh, we're driving it off of level two. Which configuration are you starting the sandstorm in? This way yeah, or the asking other side? What configuration are we starting it in? We're yeah we're we're gonna one we're gonna one eighty it because it, it's going to be uh, the safer method to drive it off level two. Most of the center of gravity of the robot is toward the back, so by doing this. We uh, make it less likely for us to tip as we go off the step. <laughs> nah, cre creep off, creep off. Yeah. No, don't do, don't do the pistons. Just, just creep off. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. All right. You can drive off level two. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, next question, Techfire225, Mom Sweet Tamale asked, do you foresee tr trouble with the uh, wear of hook and loop tape by the end of the season? We have actually already replaced our hook and loop tape, so we would probably be in the situation where we would um, replace this every couple of matches. Mr. Muskie asked, any other thoughts on if you had more time for additions or improvements, such as vision, autonomous, speed, or driver cameras? Uh, uh, from our standpoint, there are sensor opportunities, there are opportunities to work on making sure that there's strong alignment, uh, um, you, you know, alignment for the hatch, a, a lot of, a lot of practice stuff, uh, both practice and just small little things to increase the reliability of the mechanisms. Does anyone else out here have a, uh, you know, something that they would, uh, do if they had more time besides things that we've talked about already? No? Yeah. Yeah. I've got one on line following. So um, that, that would probably be one of the next things that we do. Lots of lots of sensor items. You could put a sensor in the gripper to know that you've caught the ball so you could turn off the uh, the intake roller, things like that. Nolivo asked, what is your biggest learning takeaway from this three-day experience? Um, I, I would say... For mine, it's kind of uh, you know the management and organization of this type of uh, this type of project. You really have to get get going really quickly, and uh, you know how uh, how you manage that entire build process is very uh, you, you know it, it, it's very critical for you know the success and failure of the project, and also who you got on board and that sort of thing. So uh, you know I've learned a ton about this whole process personally. I don't know if anyone else wants to share a couple learnings that they've had out here. They want to, Michaela's got one. Um, so obviously the biggest difference between uh, robot in three days and a regular build season is just how quickly things are done. And so um, I enjoyed it a lot because there was always felt like there was something to do. Um, so I also learned just like how to move quickly and to make sure that I'm getting my job done so that 
it gets to somebody else so that they can get their job done as quickly as possible. So, Chad, I just want to mention we're going to be closing off any additional questions. We have a few left to go through. Uh, then we're going to do our giveaway, and we're going to end up wrapping up for the day. So thank you, everybody, who is uh, tuning in, and thank you to all of our uh, people who have donated bits and subs. Yeah. Anyone else want to throw out anything that they've learned here? No? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll go ahead and move on to the next question. Is Hano45 asked, can you demonstrate getting the hatches out of the human player drop? Okay, that's something we could do. Something that we found that works well here is we uh, kind of just put the, the arm up um, because it's a four bar, so it actually kind of extends out of the frame a bit as it goes up, presses against there. All right. Uh, I waste my time. Yes, I do. I asked, what are the basic inspection points? The basic, the question is, what are the basic inspection points you said? Mm -hmm. Um Okay, uh, I, I could tell you where it would fail inspection right now. Number one is on the back of the electrical panel right here. We have copious amounts of wires hanging out, so we'd need to cover all of this. Um, we currently also have no uh, pressure relief valve on this robot, so it would fail that element of the inspection as well. Um, but uh, aside from that, those are, those are the big ones. Everything uh, besides weight, uh, everything else is compliant on this robot. And last question, Redfish Robotics 9958 asked, in hindsight, anything major you would have done differently? Uh, I think we've covered a lot of what we've done differently already. Um, but, you, you know, as you go forward and you design your robots, think about things that we weren't necessarily thinking about uh, at the beginning. Like, uh, I know this is debatable from people, but can you grab balls from the other side of the field? Um, there's probably uh, a number of other items, especially like, you know, hunting RP, you probably want to work on, um, you know, the big steps, maybe a bigger deal. So just, uh, you know, make sure you think through the, the whole game and don't, don't, get, uh, don't get tunnel vision based on what you see in RI3D things and just assume that, you know, the, the solution is copy, copy, copy. So um, throw, throwing that out there and uh, thanks again for providing the mug. We're going to just uh, grab everybody. So you can see all the people who have uh, really been behind the scenes making this work. So everybody needs to go up there if you've been working on the robot. All right, while we do that, we're going to uh, draw for our giveaway here. Uh, so uh, for the Redfish Robotics mug, our next winner is going to be uh, Ricketts84, congratulations, subscriber. Thank you very much. Ricketts84, get lots of rigged emotes in chat, everybody. And thank you once again. So RE3D here has been a fantastic process uh, for everybody. We can't, I mean, the, the amount of work that these people have put in over the last uh, 72 hours has been absolutely phenomenal and astronomical at the same time. To see something that is this functional, this amount of time, once again, take this as inspiration, everybody. This isn't meant to be directly copied. This is meant to be something that can inspire you to create something really cool for Destination Deep Space. want to thank everybody who has helped make this happen here. Uh, we had such a great amount of people uh, behind the scenes, uh, during the scenes, uh, and as well as, of course, all of our sponsors as well here, too. So from all of us at RA3D Team Capital, Team First Capital, really want to thank all of you for tuning in. Check out all the archive videos at youtube.com forward slash first updates now. And don't forget, we're going to have uh, weekly shows every Tuesday during build season and every Monday and Tuesday during competition season. Next week, you can check out the uh, MCC competition down in Texas on next Sunday, the 13th, at this channel, and then also a uh, RA3D competition in Michigan on the 20th. From First Updates Now, and everybody here at RA3D, First, uh, First Capital, want to thank you for tuning in. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time on First Updates Now. Talk to you then.
We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe.